Okay. Call to order the 16th regular meeting of the Lynn City Council. Madam Clerk, roll we'll call. Council Barton. Present. Present. Council Cahill. Present. Present. Council Capano. Present. Present. Council Chicutis. Present. Present. Council Colucci. Present. Present. Council Sia. Present. Present. Council Lapierre. Present. Present. Council Losey. Present. Present. Council Nett. Present. Present. Council Trahant. Present. Present. Council Walsh. Present. Present. Eleven um, present. If we could please rise for a moment of silence, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Councilor Lapierre. I'll remember Mr. and Mrs. Durant. I'd like to, I'd like to uh, pay our respects to Eddie DeGloria, who passed away this morning, Ward 6 resident, active resident. Keep her, his family in our thoughts and prayers. That snow as well. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'll take a motion to accept the minutes for yes, the sir. September 27th Second. meeting. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Opposed aye. no. The ayes have it. Madam Clerk, communications. I have no communications. We have no communications. Public hearings. Uh, first public hearing is a petition of Taco Bell, Brian Rector, for permission for a sign permit at 124 Boston Street. I'm going to open the public hearing for those wishing to speak in favor. Anyone wishing to speak in favor? Anyone wishing to speak in favor? Seeing no one wishing to speak in favor, I close the public hearing for those wishing to speak in favor. I open the public hearing for those in opposition. Anyone in opposition? <coughs> If those testifying could state their first and last name and address for the record, please. Patricia Dutch, 196 Locust Street. We live, we live in the condominiums that are behind the plaza, and we are concerned with the signage that it does not shine into our residences. And if they are putting up one of those larger signs that Wendy's and McDonald's have, that it appears only on Boston Street and not facing us so that we're looking at it or dealing with the light from it. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Anyone else in opposition? Anyone else in opposition? If you don't want to testify but you want to raise your hand in opposition, we can count. One. Would you like to testify? I'd like to speak in opposition. Absolutely. Come on up to the podium. Yes, Gertrude Sally Chapman, 196 Locust Street. I've been a resident of Lynn for over 25 years, and I've put up with Burger King, Wendy's, McDonald's, because they're a little bit distance from the condo. But this Taco Bell is directly in sight of the condo, and they have not really given us a site plan. They're telling us the signs will be on three sides of the building. We're hoping they're telling us the truth, but I have a feeling the signs are going to be higher than the building. They're going to be on quite a bit of the night, and they're going to be reflecting into our residences. We've asked them if they put up regular lighting in the parking lot to put a shield on it so it doesn't face us, but I don't think we're going to have much say in the size of the signs or how, how long they're going to be lighted. So I'm in op opposition to the signs on the building. Thank you. Anyone else in opposition? If you'd like to not testify but express your opposition by raising your hand, we're happy to count the audience of those who are opposed but don't wish to testify. Count one, two, three, four, five. The record reflect that five individuals in the audience were also opposed. With that being said, I'm going to close the public hearing for those who are to speak in opposition. I'm going to close the public hearing. Councilor Chikoudis. All right, we did have a meeting with Taco Bell a little while ago regarding a few issues. Um, one of them was the sign. I'm going to grant the sign with stipulations that it's only on the three sides. It's not facing stadium condominiums. And is anyone here from Taco Bell right now? Do we have any Taco Bell owners or enthusiasts here? I got lost. I think they got beat up pretty good. Because, <laughs> yeah. um, the other stipulation is they didn't ask, they haven't approached us, so I'm saying no to one of those tall signs like the residents were saying that. Freestanding. The what? Freestanding. Yeah, freestanding. Thank you. Um, do not want that out there. If they want to do the sign on the building, but. 
where they said the three sides not facing the stadium condominiums. With those stipulations, I'll take I'll that in the form of motion, motion to support. Motion to approve and seconded by Councilor Trahant. Is there any further discussion? Can I just Councilor add that? Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I'd just like to say that this, uh, so far, I, I, it's really, um, it befuddles me that they were next door just uh, a half hour ago on the extended hours and couldn't manage to walk across the hall next door and, um, and be here in favor of their sign. Now, you know, this august body has yet to see any uh, site plans or anything <laughs> that even resembles a sign. And usually when we grant these signs, we at least have an artist rendition or uh, something in our hands from this multi-billion dollar corporation um, by way of they want to erect a sign. And we're starting off on the wrong foot with Taco Bell. I have to tell you, I'm very disappointed in how they have navigated this process. First of all, there hasn't been a process. They've had no say with the neighbors. I cannot believe that the first time we got to talk with representatives from Taco Bell was last May during a conservation committee hearing. That's not how to do business in Lynn. They're supposed to be coming in here and as a new business working with our neighbors and our community and putting their best foot forward. I mean, so far they've done nothing to sort of ingratiate themselves to the city, its residents, this council. Um, you know, I'm very disappointed tonight, and I'm disappointed that, you know, we, we, we are on the verge of approving a sign we haven't looked at yet. So for that reason, I'm opposed to this. And until Taco Bell starts behaving like a good neighbor, they're not going to have me through their drive through anytime soon. Thank you. Any other discussion? Council Jacobus. As we spoke to Taco Bell in the other room, that was the stipulation is the sign would be on three sides of the building only. So they did tell us that in the other room. And to not defending Taco Bell, but it's zoned for that. So they do not have to have a neighborhood meeting or anything. They're just coming to us for hours and for the sign. We did not have the say if they could build the build the restaurant there because it's zoned for that. Okay. Any other discussion? See none. Roll call. Council Barton? Yes. Yes. Council Cahill? Yes. Yes. Council Capano? Yes. Yes. Council Chicoudis? Yes. Yes. Council Colucci? Yes. Yes. Council Sia? Yes. Yes. Council Lapierre? No. No. Council Losey? Yes. Yes. Council Net? Yes. Yes. Council Trahant? Yes. Yes. Council Walsh? Yes. Yes. Ten yes. Next petition. Petition to Mass Telepage Maria Suarez for permission for a sign permit at 875 Western Avenue. I'm going to open the public hearing for those wishing to speak in favor. Yeah. Anyone wishing to speak in favor? Anyone wishing to speak in favor? Seeing no one wishing to speak in favor, I close the public hearing for those wishing to speak in favor. I open the public hearing for those in opposition. Anyone in opposition? Anyone in opposition? Seeing no one in opposition, I close the public hearing. For those who wish to speak in opposition, I close the public hearing. Councilor Capano. Um, motion to table. Motion made to table, Second. not debatable. Seconded. Roll call. Council Barton? Yes. Yes. Council Cahill? Yes. Yes. Council Capano? Yes. Yes. Councilor Chicoudis? Yes. Yes. Council Colucci? Yes. Yes. Councilor Sia? Yes. Yes. Council Lapia? Yes. Yes. Council Lozzi? Yes. Yes. Council Annette? Yes. Yes. Council Trahant? Yes. Yes. Council Walsh? Yes. Yes. 11. Yes. Uh, petition of Spina's Auto Body, Alfred Spina, for use of auto body shop at existing auto repair shop at 164 Blossom Street. Hours Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. I'll open the public hearing for those who wish to speak in favor. Mr. President, through you to the members of the Council, I'm Attorney Sam Vitale. I'm here on behalf of the petitioner, Fred Spina, who's seated at the end of the first row over here on the left. The Spina family's operated uh, an auto body facility on Alley Street for over 50 years. They want to stay in Lynn and expand. Um, they've located a facility which has already been permitted in the past by this body, uh, the McLaughlin facility at 164 Blossom Street. What they seek is your permission to uh, locate their business uh, around the corner, essentially, and share that space. Uh, there will be no uh, additional construction, no additions or alterations to the building. Uh, as I say, it allows us to keep uh, an existing business here in Lynn that wants to grow. Um, the reason we're before you is that uh, auto body is a, a permission that requires city council consent. Uh, it's in the waterfront district, and therefore we're going to go next Tuesday night to the, uh, to the Board of Appeals, and hopefully I can report to the Board of Appeals 
that the city council acted with favor upon this request. I'd be glad to answer uh, any questions any member may have. Thank you, Councillor. Anyone else wishes to speak in favor? Anyone else wishes to speak in favor? Seeing no one else wishes to speak in favor, I close the public hearing for those wishing to speak in favor. I open the public hearing for those wishing to speak in opposition. Anyone in opposition? Anyone in opposition? Seeing no one wishing to speak in opposition, I close the public hearing for those wishing to speak in opposition. I close the public hearing. Councilor Capano. Yes, I met with uh, Mr. Spina and Mr. McLaughlin. Uh, they both, uh, both businesses have been there forever, you know, part of the neighborhood, both very respected businesses, and it's really a good fit. Uh, Mr. Spina wants to expand, and Mr. McLaughlin has the space, and uh, it actually will, you know, probably alleviate some of the cars also on Alley Street. So I, I'm, real, I'm in favor of this. And uh, I'd like to make a motion to grant. Second. Second. Made to grant and seconded. Any discussion? Roll call. Council Barton? Yes. Yes. Council Cahill? Yes. Yes. Council Capano? Yes. Yes. Council Chacutis? Yes. Yes. Council Colucci? Yes. Yes. Council Sia? Yes. Yes. Council Lapierre? Yes. Yes. Council Lozen? Yes. Yes. Council Nett? Yes. Yes. Council Trahant? Yes. Yes. Council Walsh? Yes. Yes. 11 yes. Motion carries. Petition of Comcast Timothy Good Broderick luck. for permission to intercept existing conduit on Willow Street and place new manhole from new manhole place one three inch PVC conduit 45 feet plus or minus in a northeasterly direction to the property of 51 Willow Street. I'm going to open the public hearing for those who wish to speak in favor. Mr. Broderick. Good evening. Uh, Timmy Broderick, Comcast 9B Forbes Road in Woburn, uh, in favor of the petition. Can answer Thank any you questions much. you may have? Eloquent. Anyone else wishes to speak in favor? Anyone else wishes to speak in favor? Seeing no one else wishes to speak in favor, I close the public hearing for those wishing to speak in favor. I open the public hearing for those in opposition. Opposition, opposition, Mr. Anderson. Calvin Anderson, 12 Concord Street. Once again, Comcast is really not, uh, let's say, client-oriented. And when you go home tonight, you might find, I, I caught the early news before I came in, but Comcast has just been fined millions of dollars by the government because of um, they were flim-flam and all kinds of things. It was some kind of a thing. They weren't making clear what their valued clients were actually subscribing to. And they were doing phantom charges and all this stuff. Now there's, they're rewriting the rules. They claim that they're going to be more customer-friendly, client-oriented. Well, let's do it because you want to, not just because you have to and ordered it. My hero when I was living in Malden was Congressman Markey. He took on the telecom industry like nobody else had before in D.C. And I wish as a senator now I'd be hearing more, his voice more in this too. Now, I have since changed my uh, provider and I've been exceedingly happy. Now, Comcast still didn't fix what they were doing. They still owe me all kinds of sweat equity and money. It's in the hands of the FCC now. But I'm sure Mr. Broderick's a nice guy. He can't help it that he works for the devil. Their Comcast colors are red and black. What does that remind you of? Who could it be? Who could it be? Could it be Satan? <laughs> Remember Church Lady was on TV. If you can get good TV, you can get reruns if you have a good TV carrier. <laughs> anyway, Verizon even changed their colors. They got rid of the black. I think it's just red and white now because they knew the satanic uh, uh, connotation they had. So anyway, until this company starts treating their existing customers better and has some contrition and starts being genuinely customer oriented, I am opposed to any expansion by this company until they can take care of the clients that they have now. Mr. Anderson, Mr. Anderson, who's your carrier now? Oh, I moved to Verizon. They have a good bundle. They actually talk to you right. And I think they're a Good, rugged union shop. Mr. Anderson, their colors are red, white, and black. <laughs> Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? Anyone else wishes to speak in opposition? Seeing no one else wishes to speak in opposition, I close the public hearing with those wishing to speak in opposition. <laughs> I close the public hearing. <laughs> Councillor Chikudis. Motion to grant as long as, as usual, as I say, put the street back in the condition it was or in better condition. I'll second that with uh, the councilor's stipulations. Motion made and seconded. Uh, Mr. Broderick, do you disavow Satan? <laughs> do you disavow Satan? Do I disavow Satan? <laughs> yeah, I think so. On the record. <laughs> okay, roll call. <laughs> Council 
Councilor Barton? Yes. Yes, yes. Councilor Cahill? Yes. Yes, Councilor Capano? Yes. Yes, Councilor Caputo? Yes. Yes, Councilor Colucci? Yes. Yes, Councilor Sear? Yes. Yes, Councilor Lapierre? Yes. Yes, Councilor Losey? Yes. Yes, Councilor Nett? Yes. Yes, Councilor Trahant? Yes. Yes, Councilor Walsh? Yes. Good luck. All right. The next batch of petitions, let me see. Yeah, we're going to take a batch of petitions that is no. There's seven of them. Objection. We'll take them all at once, Madam Clerk. I'm going to open the public hearing for the following uh, petition. Petition <coughs> to Mobility LLC Scott Snyder for permission to attach equipment to a new utility pole in the right of way north of the intersection of Park Street and Bennett Circle <coughs> on Park Street. The next one is to in the right of way southwest of the intersection of South Common and Market Square on South Common Street. Next one is in the public right of way located northeast of the intersection of Washington Street and Boston Street with electricity connection and location approximate to plan. Uh, on the public right of way located north of the intersection of Waverly and Boston Street, electricity connection and location approximately as shown on plan. N in the right of way northeast of the intersection of Baker Street and Birmingham on Baker Street with electricity connection and location approximately shown on plan. In the right of way northeast of the intersection of Andrew Street and Market Street on Andrew Street with the electricity connection and location approximately shown on plan. And in the right of way southwest of the intersection of Broad Street and Liberty Square on Liberty Square with electricity connection and location approximately shown on plan. I'm going to open the public hearing for those wishing to speak in favor. Good evening, Mr. President, members of the City Council, Brian Grossman, Anderson Krieger, Council to the Applicant Mobility. Also with me is Rosanna Ferrante, who is the Senior Permitting Manager for Mobility. You can do it all at once if you want together. That's easier. <coughs> uh, Mr. President, I know we were here uh, a few weeks ago uh, with a handful of petitions that were tabled, and you've just read the, uh, the notice for the new petitions. Um, in general, uh, we, we explained who mobility was last time. Um, one thing I do note about the existing, the, the prior pending proposals as well as the new ones is they were all um, submitted and advertised as 75 foot poles um, through really Rosanna's hard work. Um, we have managed to bring those down um, to 50 feet across the board. Um, I know that we, we heard the concerns at the last meeting and so we, we've been working on that. Um, the, this new batch got submitted while we were still working on that. Um, but so that is some, some good news. So it's now really very close to what you would expect in terms of overall general height for a utility pole, which is typically 35 to 45, 50 feet, somewhere in there. Um, <clears throat> we know that's, that's new information. Um, we do not have revised plans, so we're not um, asking for or expecting a decision this evening. We want to make sure we get you those updated plans. Um, in addition, we know um, last time some of the information that we had submitted, um, there weren't copies that were able to be distributed to city councilors. Uh, Rosanna did um, provide additional information. Hopefully that's been, been shared among the councils. So um, you know, I know folks were concerned they didn't even have a, a plan or a photo or anything to look at. Hopefully you've, you've received that information and have had an opportunity to, to review it. Um, <clears throat> overall, in terms of what mobility has on the table at this point, is I think you've read now between the tabled and the new ones, 11 petitions. Um, we do have a total of 13 expected for uh, Lynn at this point. Um, so there are two more. Uh, they have not been, they may not have been submitted yet, um, or they may just not have been submitted in time to make this meeting. But I um, understand there are two additional ones that we would expect to be before you um, in, the, in the very near future. Overall, uh, the current plan has uh, 13 total, 12 proposed um, new utility poles, all 50 feet, um, and then one attachment to an existing uh, utility pole as well. Um, we do have a map that kind of shows throughout the city where those are located so you can get an idea of the overall plan. I don't think that's been submitted yet. No, I do have it here, hard copy. Um, if you would like to pass that around so everyone can kind of get the overview for a plan here. Thank you. Um, we can also pass around the, what a Tiffany Good, um, this is actually taller than Tiffany Good, but what I only have a handful of those, um, so we can dis distribute them and, and pass them around. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> so really the goal this evening for us is to take a step back from the 
from the previous hearing, they'd really reset and say, here's our plan for learning. If you could use the microphone, just because oh, there's folks at home. I'm sorry. Stay. That's all right. Um, so really the plan here this evening is to take a step back from our previous hearing and to provide an overview as to what the plan would be in Lynn and then talk <coughs> about um, next steps as to how we could proceed to kind of get to the, the, the different concerns of individual locations. Um, at times we've had jurisdictions refer, to commit, refer this type of evaluation to committees, to, do, to either DPW committee or license and franchising or public property. So we would love to answer any questions that you have in order to be able to make any determination as to next steps. Thank you. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to continue the public hearing for those wishing to speak in favor and then do opposition and then we'll open it up for you folks. So I would sit probably very close by because I'm sure there will be a number <laughs> okay. of questions. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Seeing no one else wishing to speak in favor, I close the public hearing for those wishing to speak in favor. I open the public hearing for those in opposition. Anyone wish to testify in opposition? Mr. Amaralt. Council President, good evening. Oh, I'm Paul Amaralt. I represent uh, the Hall Company. We manage 225, 229 South Common, which is, I think, the last one on that list. Um, I think that you can't hear that well back there. So I think I heard that it's 70 feet now to 50. So I guess 50 feet would be 20 feet. Um, if my Lynn English education works. Um, so it's 20 feet less unsightly. Um, we just don't think that's a good fit, good location there uh, where we are at the Commons. We hope the Council sees it the same way we do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Emerald. Calvin, how are you? Okay. Okay. Anyone, else? I knew you were here. <laughs> Anyone else wish to speak in opposition? Anyone else wish to speak in opposition to the Mobileite applicants? No, I think. Okay. Uh, seeing no one wishing to speak in opposition, does anyone want to raise their hand if they're here in opposition but don't wish to testify? Seeing none, here we go. If you want to testify, in, in, if you're opposed, okay, come on up here. You can state your name and your address for the record, please, and then you can you can say actually anything you want. <laughs> My name is here. Marisol Sustache. I live at 39 Jackson. It's on the list, but I didn't hear it. Uh, I didn't hear the name. Jackson and Terrace. It may be on a list of uh, applications that have been tabled. One moment, please. It is showing it on the uh, yeah. map. On the map. Oh, yeah. I see it. But, yeah. Well, we believe that's, that's not on, on the map, but that is right here. Jackson on Street's on there. Right. Jackson Street is on. Jackson, Jackson Street's on the map. Jackson. Yes, Jackson Street's on the map. Right here. The we have those. The pool, according to the plan that I saw, it's going to go right in front of my house. I'm on 39 Jackson. I have a yeah. daughter who's in a wheelchair. That pool is going to go like right in front of her window where she sleeps. My concern is something happens with the pool, it falls, an electrical wire falls, it's going to go right to her window. So that's my, yeah. my concern about that. And when the buses come to pick her up, that's where they park. All right. Thank you Thank very you. much. Anyone else wishes to speak in opposition? Oh, good, right? Seeing no one else wishes to speak in opposition, I close the public hearing. Right. For those wishing to speak in opposition, I close the public hearing. I'm going to open up to questions right away. Councilor Tron. Thank you, Mr. President. I just had to clue the chair to. Come on up, folks. Now, what are you supplying with these poles? And mm -hmm. you know, like, what, what are you making the, the cell phone service better for? I don't know if anybody understands what what the purpose of the. Sure. Um, as I know we, we gave an, a brief introduction last time as well, but for folks who may not remember or may not have been here. Um, so what mobility is doing is they are building out a hybrid transport network. So what they are providing is really the backbone um, and transport service for data provider, data to carriers um, to move their data. Uh, one of a number of mobility's clients are wireless communications carriers. And so just like they have facilities that would be um, that have you know, the, the large radio communications equipment cabinets that are then connected by fiber um, and then run that information back to the switch. Effectively, that's what mobility is doing, is providing that what they call backhaul service. Um, except we're, mobility is doing it through a hybrid transport network. So it is partially wired at some points, um, but the, the front end of it, um, including the utility pole application, is uh, utilizing wireless. 
uh, some benefits to that um, because rather than tearing up streets um, to have to install long runs of fiber, um, in some cases we don't have to tear up streets at all. We can pull electricity from a manhole nearby. Um, in those cases where uh, you know electric isn't readily available right um, you know through an existing conduit or manhole nearby, um, the run in terms of, of the need for a conduit to run from that location to mobility is still significantly far less than running fiber, uh, you know, completely down a down a street and uh, or through a neighborhood. Now, is this helping? If I could, uh, is this helping like the the people of the city? Is this helping with us with our wireless or internet, or is this more like you're helping other businesses or? Well, so we're, you know, mobility provides the back-end service. So whoever, is, whoever the client is that's providing kind of what we call the, the front-end, so if it's a Sprint or a Verizon or a T-Mobile or an AT&T, that carrier that's providing the front-end, um, we're providing densification for them um, for backhaul. And so those subscribers to those services would see a benefit. Um, but our clients are not just limited to you know, the major wireless communications carriers. As I talked a little bit about last time, um, we are moving to really a connected economy and a mobile economy. And so beyond just the smartphone that people want to stream their YouTube um, and play their Pokemon Go and, and, all, and get their email um, and do their web browsing, uh, there are a whole host of things that are coming. Um, more, uh, as we continue to move forward, connected devices are going to be the, the big thing, what they call the Internet of Things. Um, and so, you know, things from as silly as a connected refrigerator that can tell you you're out of milk um, to autonomous cars or, um, or computer-assisted cars all the, and everything in between, all of those things are going to require more and more data um, and more and more bandwidth and more and more backhaul. And that's what mobility will provide. Yeah, this is definitely more focused on data. This is not a voice voice network, this is a data to try to, and the reason why the engineers have chosen these locations is because of the consumption and the, the basis of the capacity issues that they're finding, sorry, the capacity issues they're finding with the data. The other thing is with this equipment, um, it is capable of having a combiner on the antenna, so it could be more than one provider out there that can use this particular location. So it wouldn't necessarily just have to be a Sprint or a Verizon, it could be two two of the carriers, so that's a benefit as well. Okay, now just to expand, now if I could, now so now are you gonna be put in, like I see those poles, and then you see a thousand antennas on now, are you gonna do that like in front of people's homes? I know uh, Mr. Amaral spoke about it, he did one in front of their buildings. Are you guys gonna be putting all these little antennas on that whole pole now, that 50 foot pole? I mean, is it gonna become an eyesore? No, I, I mean what we've I, the, the picture we distributed is a typical speaking of, is is a typical mobility um, installation. Um, so there are you know certain smaller boxes and things that are located on the pole. The antenna is located at the top. Uh, for the most part, they're wood poles, so that cable that does run up the side and it's you know covered by a riser. So you know try to make it look as as well kept as possible. Um, but you know certainly it's. So do people have a problem if we put a stipulation on it saying that we didn't want a lot of antennas on it? Well, it, it's so the it's not designed to be like your typical pole. You know, some of the poles you've seen where you have a lot of carriers. That's not the way this works. It's one antenna at the top, and if it is to provide for two different companies, then it would be a combiner in that one antenna. So it's a technical thing. Correct. These antennas it's not multiple antennas. Them. No, it's one antenna with technology that combines the frequencies. Okay. And then I just had one more question, if I could, Mr. President. Uh, there was a young lady just spoke, I believe, right here. She talked about a handicapped child. Now, is there a way to move that, move that pole out of the front of her house so that we'll have easy access for her presence? Yes. I, one of the one of the things Rosanna said up front was, you know, part of this is to, to start the dialogue. And we know, you know, when you're proposing a new poll, um, what may look good from, you know, our investigation and vetting of locations on, on the street, uh, something like that. There's just something we're not going to know. Um, and certainly, you know, either you know, through here or through committee, um, to work through those details to make sure that if there is a site-specific issue um, that we need to work to address, that we do that. Yeah, I just hope you know they could take a note of that, please, and make sure. I, I already did. Okay. No, and I would say that one of the um, one of the values that I found in working with some other jurisdictions is actually going out to each particular site <laughs> and actually talking about it and saying, okay, well, let's see, does this make sense here? Is, it a, is there a way to move it a little bit? So to me, I would recommend that that be part of the evaluation process with 
again, not sure who the right people are to be at those visits, but it does make a big difference, and we have found, and the jurisdictions have found a lot of value in it. Councilor Colucci. Thank you. I, I think, I think, I just, it's just cell phone towers, right? That's what they're doing here? No, no, not exactly. Not exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as we talked about last time, I, mobility is a um, competitive local exchange carrier, yes. and, they're, and they're providing back also. Very much like Light Tower or you know, Comcast or whomever is moving data, that's, that's what mobility is doing. They're just doing it in a slightly different way. Any other questions? Uh, Councilor Chikoutis. I have a question. Well, the pole is so tall now. What about heavy winds? Um, how much wind can they actually sustain? So the wooden poles are still engineered, um, and so there's still you know, a, you know, structural evaluation that's done to ensure that the um, pole can accommodate not only the, the equipment, um, and that's whether, th that's whether it's on an existing pole or a new pole, um, but also to make sure that it meets uh, you know, code and things like that. And the codes um, for different areas in include um, things like wind speeds, and so uh, you know, a wind speed uh, for a structure you're designing, you know, um, you know, down on the Cape, may be different um, than something that you know we're designing to be located here. Um, it may be higher or lower, but there are codes that talk. The codes factor that in, um, and our engineering <coughs> factors that in as well. Councilor Chuck, can I ask Councilor Annette and then go back to Councilor Chuck? Thank Councilor you, Mr. Annette. President. I have a question. When you said new poles, that mean new poles you put on your own poles, or that you, you will install new poles? That's a correct when you say new poles. Mm -hmm. Yes, and so it wouldn't create a double pole. It would be a new pole in in the proposed location. Okay, and uh, how heavy is the the antenna? Do you know? Um, I don't have the exact number. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to misquote the weight of it. I can certainly get that for you, but they're not, this is not a heavy installation by any means. <coughs> so the same pole as the telephone pole, right? Same it's right, exactly. Pole. It's the same, okay. right. Okay. So it's an omni antenna at the top. Councilor Trahant, now go to Councilor uh, I, have, and then go to I just have one more question I want to, Councilor. Now it's cool to actually made me think of it. Um, we have a lot of problem in the city with double poles. Pole gets taken down with a car. They just come and double it. Now you guys, who do we contact if someone hits one of those poles in the winter or when it comes down? Is that your responsibility to come and put it right up? Yes. So how soon can you guys come respond to us? Uh, mobility has a local team in place. Rosanna is part of that. Um, and so it would be, you know, it, it, they're much more fleet of foot than, than the, um, the, the larger um, utilities. It would be we don't a couple do days. We wouldn't do a double pole. We, we certainly wouldn't do a double pole. <laughs> And I just would like to put that on a stipulation too when we approve this that there's to be no double poles that if it falls it, it gets replaced um, that and is, that would be fine that is the benefit <coughs> of mobility being a private company that they can be agile that way <coughs> a million of those already we don't need any more so Mr. President, if I can, one, um, Lynn is not alone in the double poll issue. We certainly are aware of it. Um, it's come up. Uh, we know that you have the new legislation. And if I can, uh, Mr. President, just to the councilor's question uh, just before, um, the, the antenna at the top of a pole is approximately 11 pounds. Okay. I'm going to Councilor Capano has a question and then Councilor Lozzi. We're going to go Capano and then Lozzi. Okay. Councilor Capano. Just uh, one question as far as maintenance goes. This picture here is really neat. I mean, everything is lined up perfectly. Uh, everything is tied off. All the wires are tied off. Everything's mounted uh, very neatly. It looks nice uh, as far as a pole like that could go. So as soon as something happens after a couple months and a couple of uh, these brackets fall off and the wires start hanging off, the, who, do, who, do we, who do we call? Again, you'd, you'd call mobility because they're, they're a how private long, company. How long is the response time? I think you'll find mobility uh, very I'm responsive as a private company. I'm trying to be wise here. No, no, this no, happens no. to us all the time. And if you look at, you know, if you ride around the city, uh, uh, there's, there's why there's some, some of these places are a mess. And, and if we don't call, nobody's going to come and, and, and fix it, you know. And so it, it's up to us to call, and then it's up to us to wait for someone to show up. And we don't always know how long that's going to be, and it's never the next day or even the day after. So that's why I'm asking that. 
In, I mean, in terms of exact response time, I, I don't have one. I, I know Mobility is seeking to be very responsive in the communities in which they're locating. Um, we are a private, Mobility is a private company. Um, you know, they do have their own, you know, they do have contractors that work for them uh, that can be dispatched. It would be within, you know. You contract out to, to other countries, to, to other companies to do that, that work, or is it a mobility? Uh, someone from mobility that comes to do that. Well, we do have like internal construction team, mm -hmm. so they would probably manage a sub to, that would be doing it. But we have an internal construction department here locally. That I would say, the, but, but the, the, the actual work itself. Yeah. Yeah, I'd have to find out exactly how that plays out. But I would say that if there is a time frame you have in mind or something, we could definitely take that into consideration as a condition or stipulation of some sort to say that the response time needs to be within this window or. Well, I would love to be able to call with a problem like that with anybody and have them come the next day and fix it. Uh, you know, it used to happen years ago. It doesn't seem to happen anymore. Uh, but and, that's and something we can take back. And, and our expectations uh, get lower and lower, what, what we would expect in a day. You know, you might expect in a week, uh, and then that becomes two weeks, and then uh, then people expect that no one's ever going to show up for a month, and if you show up in three weeks, that's like a good job. You know, that's why I'm asking that. If you don't have your own people, you have an internal team, that means you would have to rely on a local contractor, which you you may not have yet. And that, that's what I'm, I'm assuming based on your response. Right. Yeah, we, we don't have that in place today. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Council LaPierre. Thank you, Mr. President. I just had two clarifying questions. So my first question is um, in terms of the, I don't know what the proper term is, but the, the wavelength of how these uh, happen, like the distance in which they might be, the pole erected, what neighborhoods, or how far of this bandwidth will this help? If you're saying, I think the proposal's for 12 new poles, that affects our whole city, will that provide coverage for the whole city? Well, What's the proximity of the uh, service? So each, it's a half a mile radius at the most. Half a mile each, radius at the most. That each pole, right. So based on the way the, the plan is for Lynn, it my, and I'm not an engineer, but based on the way they're laid out, it seems as though that's where the highest demand is for data of where the poles are proposed. So they don't necessarily go to that much further out in that, the area that they're in. So my follow-up to that would be, are you soliciting in our neighboring communities as well, like Swamp Scott, Saugus, Peabody, Linfield, and other areas yes. that would You're be, uh, in other communities would we well. get any of the effect once you are successful in those communities? Would we get any of the uh, sort of the, you know, the, the data in, if it's in that proximity? Let's say you're on Highland Ave on 107 Salem. Potentially, if you're on Salem, the line, maybe. And would we get some of that? It depends on the. It depends where it's located in that half mile radius. So there might be spots. And are there any in those neighborhoods or communities at this time, or closest to Lynn that you've installed in? No, not yet. That we could visit or assert, you know, do a site. No, unfortunately, to? right now we are moving in all the jurisdictions at the same time. <laughs> so we're all at the same place, which is evaluation, education, try to let you know. Not in Essex County. Sense. Not yet. What's the closest I could visit one of your uh, installs at this time? Oh, Baltimore. Closest community. <laughs> Baltimore? Baltimore. Wow. We don't have anything here yet, right? Thank you. We could send you to Baltimore. Rochester. Rochester. Oh, that's in the budget. We're working through this nationally, so. Okay, thank you. Do you have, uh, we'll defer to the Dean, Councilor Kaluki. Why don't we just let them put them in another city first, see how it goes, and then come to Lynn? That's good a good idea. question. That's a good question. Councillor Walsh. Thank you. I just have a question. So I've seen some similar equipment that's been put on poles that are already in place in the city, okay? And they have fans attached to these power pack units that kind of make some noise. Do you guys have similar uh, power pack units that are going to have fans attached to them to cool them down? I don't believe uh -huh. there's any noise with ours. So I can confirm that, but I'm almost positive that I, when I heard that myself, I was like, oh, okay, no, no noise. So I, I'll confirm that, but I don't believe so. I just, I just, I, just I, I don't know if the city needs any more telephone poles, to be honest with you. And I, I don't know why existing poles that are there can't be used. Is there any reason why we can't use existing poles for this equipment? So the, our site selection team, so unfortunately we are not part of that team to select the site. Okay, so that's why my suggestion is, which again I found fruitful in other jurisdictions, is to go out to the areas and see if there is another potential site 
an existing poll rather than a proposed poll and discuss that? Just, just as a follow-up to, to that, yeah. uh, one, of the, one of the other issues is, um, you know, and one of the reasons why Rosanna said it a few times now is, you know, visiting each locale with appropriate representatives of the city is one, as we talked about before, there are times where people are aware of something that we are not, um, but also, you know, just because it's an existing poll doesn't mean it doesn't have some of the same questions or concerns. You know, you have the, a poll location that's just outside, uh, you know, someone's window or just in a particular location that makes it already difficult um, for that neighborhood. And so adding to it, while possibly intuitive um, at times, would be, no, we don't, we don't want you to use that existing one. Actually, a new poll in this location would, in fact, be better. Uh, and so that's one of the reasons why, um, you know, we've said, you know, working with appropriate folks, whomever the city council deems right, whether that's committee, whether that's, um, you know, municipal officials, um, we'd like to get with them um, and work with them to talk about the sites we've already selected um, and review them for appropriateness. Uh, Mr. President. Council Losey. Thank you. Um, through the president, I'd like to ask Brian or Rosetta, has Mobileite entered into any formal agreements with the utilities that it intends to uh, attach its equipment to? Yes, we do have a we yes we do have an agreement with um, National Grid. We have an agreement with EverSource, and where we can, we do attach to their poles because that is the least intrusive. That's that makes sense for us. It's when there isn't that opportunity, that's when we need to go to a new pole. Now. Uh, as Brian mentioned earlier, I went back and fought my own company on getting the height lowered because I said 75 is not going to happen. It's not. It's not. Thank you, Rosa. Right. So we and came back to 50. So now at 50. But you answered my question, if I could. Sure. Um, has Mobileite identified the poll numbers of each poll that it intends to attach its equipment? Well, we only have one poll where we are proposing an attachment. The rest of the polls are new. Okay. My final question, can mobility, given with the, the, dis, the discussion we've had this evening, can Mobileite um, provide the city with a five-year master plan stating its current estimates of the need for the equipment, including alternative analysis, given that even you yourself, Rosetta, mentioning that it's least intrusive rather than putting a new poll um, and to provide that for the city of Lynn um, during this period. So five years is, is a long time. I can tell you that I pushed back on the company to give me what the plan is in the near term. So that's where we came back with these 13 locations. Yeah, see, that's just so five year with foot technology, into the door. We tough. need to know more what your plans are for our city. And uh, as you mentioned, even yourself, that these polls are, it, it, that placing them on existing polls is least intrusive. So, and as Councilor Walsh mentioned, it's an eyesore to have these polls up. Um, I, I, I think at this time, I'd like to make a motion, Mr. President. Sure. I'd like to... Uh, deny this peti petition without prejudice because the plans have changed from what was uh, current publicly uh, submitted and until a new application is submitted with the requested information uh, make that in the form of a motion. A second. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Right, is there any discussion? Right, Councilor Colucci. We should wait till they do it in other city first <laughs> under the amendment. Friendly amendment. Well, well th that's by them withdrawing this. Well, or actually, we're denying this without prejudice. They can't. Uh, okay. That's fine. They can't submit another one until for a year, I believe. Okay. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none. Roll call on the denial. Council Barton. Yes. Yes. Council Cahill. Yes. Yes. Council Capano. Yes. Yes. Council Chakudis. Yes. Yes. Council Colucci. Yes. Yes. Council Sia. Yes. Yes. Council Lapierre. Yes. Yes. Council Losey. Yes. Yes. Council Net. Yes. Yes. Council Chahan. Yes. Yes. Council Walsh. Yes. Yes. Eleven. Yes. Thank you. We also have some tables. I don't know if you want to include those or There's also several provisions that have been tabled. Would anyone like to take the other provision, the other applications off the table? It's more serious. 
Motion has been made to take off the table. Second. Second. Seconded. All those in favor on taking off the table say aye. If aye. No, the ayes have it. The matter is taken off the table. Councilor Rosie. Uh, on the other seven applications. Motion to deny. Motion made Second. to deny the same stipulation. Discussion, roll call. Council Barton? Yes. Yes. Council Cahill? Yes. yes. Council Capano? Yes. Yes. Council Chicutis? Yes. Yes. Council Colucci? Yes. Yes. Council Sia? Yes. Yes. Council Lapierre? Yes. Yes. Council Losey? Yes. Council yes. Nett? Yes. Yes. Council Trahan? Yes. Yes. Council Walsh? Yes. Yes. 11, yes. Just for the point of clarification, the last motion, is that also the round card vote? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any more public hearings? No more public hearings. Well, at this point, I'm going to ask for Councilor Sear to come up because tonight is my wedding anniversary. I'm going to have dessert <laughs> with my wife. Ooh. Happy anniversary. 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 Ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations. <laughs> Eight years. I didn't get to do that. I didn't get to go to Hawaii. <coughs> <coughs> oh, it's two weeks ago. Oh, wow. Because <coughs> you're not the council president. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, public hearings to be set down. There's several. I'll read them together if there's no objection. We should have committed to have them read as one. Make the motion. So moved. Motion second. Made. Petition in National Grid, Chris Radzik, for permission to install two four-inch PVC conduits from pole number one to property at 124 Boston Street. Petition of Comcast, Robert Oliveira, for permission to intercept existing conduit on Market Street and place new four-by-four four manhole from new manhole, one four-inch PVC conduit, communication conduit, 185 feet plus or minus in a northeasterly direction to the rear building at 324 Broad Street to provide service to 200 Market Street. Petition of Vincente Fresco for permission to park an oil truck on the property of a home-based business at 143 Alley Street. Petition of AL Prime Energy Consultants Inc. Nasser Boussier for permission for the conversion of an existing gasoline filling station with storage of inflammables to a self-service filling station with the food mart with the sale of wine and malt beverage. Petition at BWBC 1 LLC Attorney James Moore for Nicholas Menino for permission to allow City of Lynn licensed mobile food vehicles to operate at Unit 18180 Commercial Street seven days a week, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. and Saturday and Sunday, 12 noon to 8 p.m. So we show the council. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Um, I have no unfinished business, and if anybody has any, no I want to bring up. Any unfinished business? Committee reports. Um, ordinance committee. We have a proposed amendment to the zone ordinance that's been um, sent to be sent out to the council. So council need a motion Walsh. to accept the report. Oh, accept the report. Yeah. Unanimous vote, committee. Motion to approve. All those Second. in favor? Uh, can I take a roll call on that? Yep. Uh, Council Barton? Yes. Yes. Council Cahill? Absent. Council Capano? Yes. Yes. Council Chicutis? Yes. Yes. Council Colucci? Yes. Yes. Council Sia? Yes. Yes. Council Lapierre? Yes. Yes. Council Losey? Yes. Yes. Council Nett? Yes. Yes. Council Trahant? Absent. Council Walsh? Yes. Yes. Uh, ways and means? We have several financial transfers. Also, that, oh, any objections? Sorry, read I'll read them all together. Appropriate, uh, ordered that the city controller take the following action: appropriate from the overlay surplus the sum of four hundred and seventy-seven thousand five hundred ninety-nine dollars and zero cents to fund retro pay raises per labor union negotiations. <coughs> Certify as an available fund the amount of fifty-nine thousand six hundred twenty-five dollars and zero cents. <coughs> as allotted to the City of Lynn Fire Department by the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security for the Fiscal Year 17 State 911 Training Grant and EMD Regulatory Compliance Grant. Certify as an available fund the amount of $4,014,427.00 as allotted to the City of Lynn School Department by the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education 
for the fiscal year 17 SPED 240 grant <coughs> certify as an available fund the amount of $1,154,901.00 as allotted to the City of Lynn School Department by the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education for the fiscal year Title IIA grant certify as available fund the amount of $476,224.00 as allotted to the City of Lynn School Department by the Department of Elementary and Se Secondary Education for the fiscal year 17 Title III grant. Rescind as an available fund the amount of $49,827.30 previously accepted during July meeting that was allotted to the City of Lynn Department of Public Works by the Department of Transportation for the fiscal year 17 Complete Streets Program grant. And there's three other orders that I can keep separately if you want. You can read them all. Okay, ordered that Her Honor the Mayor is hereby authorized to execute all documents necessary to obtain the $2.5 million <coughs> MassWorks grant for the purpose of improving roadways in the vicinity of the new market basket. Ordered that the City of Lynn award YMCA Metro North the RFP for the sale of a portion of Neptune Street on the condition that the YMCA Metro North makes a payment of $75,000 on the date of the conveyance to the City of Lynn as a payment in lieu of taxes. The YMCA <coughs> Metro North shall also furnish the City a bond in form satisfactory to the City Solicitor ensuring, ensuing that the, I'm sorry, ensuring that the roadway construction is completed. The YMCA shall also furnish the city with the construction schedule as required by the RFP. The deed shall not be executed until roadway constructions are complete so as to ensure vehicles do not drive over non-city of Lynn land. All other terms of the RFP shall be incorporated in the deed. Ordered that the city clerk be directed to cause notice to be advertised that the meetings of the qualified voters of the city of Lynn will be held in the several polling places heretofore designated for the state election on Tuesday, the 8th day of November from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. And the last one is motion to refer the RFP for medical marijuana out to the full council with the following amendments. Page 6, section 2D, 7, delete. Page 6, section 2H, delete. Page 8, section 24F, add applicant status and position regarding possible recreational use. Page 10, section 4A, 4G, delete subsections 2, 3, 4, 7, 10, and 11. And that's it. Council oh, Annette. Thank you, Madam Clerk, Mr. Lott. Mr. Vice President, all order of the committee to accept and make a motion to approve. Motion to approve is seconded. I need a roll call. Roll call. Council Barton. Yes. Yes. Council Cahill, absent. Council Capano. Yes. Yes. Council Chikudis. Yes. Yes. Council Colucci. Yes. Yes. Council Sia. Yes. Yes. Council Lapierre. Yes. Yes. Council Losey. Yes. Yes. Council Net. Yes. Yes. Council Trahant, absent. Council Walsh. Yes. Yes. And I need a roll call on the emergency. Emergency. There was an emergency. Okay. Motion made. Seconded. Roll call. Council Barton. Yes. Yes. Council Cahill, absent. Council Capano. Yes. Yes. Council Chikudis. Yes. Yes, Council Colucci. Yes. Yes, Council Sia. Yes. Yes, Council Lapierre. Yes. Yes, Council Losey. Yes. Yes, Council Net. Yes. Yes, Council Trahan, absent. Council Walsh. Yes. Yes, nine yes. And finally, licensing committee. Council Walsh. Unanimous vote of committee. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. New business, Council Capano. Yeah, I, I'd like to set down for a public hearing uh, uh, street name change, Gayron Way to Pine Hill Terrace. What's the name of the street? It'll be Pine Hill Terrace. What was the previous name? Gayron Way. Gay Way. There's two Gayron Ways. One is off Lin Linwood, and the other one's off Bellevue Road. And sometimes the DPW, when we call, or you know, in the future, other people too that work with the city, they go to the wrong place. It's just very confusing. They don't connect, so. I had a meeting with the neighbors up there a couple times, actually, and uh, that's the name <coughs> that came up with that everyone seems to agree Pine on. Terrace? Pine Hill Terrace. I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Any other business? Seconded.